Hey guys, Ponce here to talk to you guys about the 9.114 Fight Tactics patch, uh, which will be released tomorrow, Wednesday the 17th. Now, for those of you guys familiar with the channel, you probably know that I tend to release smaller videos talking about individual important changes. This time I'll actually be talking about the entire patch note, as kind of outlined by Riot here, because, well, it's kind of significant. It's really going to change the game up quite a bit overall. Um, like, all these little things tend to add up. And on top of that... Uh, I've been playing on the PB for the last little while now, and it kind of settled into a specific thing, which we'll be talking about in a bit. But they're doing actually a lot of last second or last minute changes, I guess, last day changes. Um, so basically, the gameplay coming from the PBE over the last probably week or so is not really going to strongly resemble what we're going to be seeing on live hitting tomorrow, assuming this goes in exactly as they state it. All right. So um, this little spiel here, I think the most important thing is apparently they'll be doing a weekly patch as opposed to a bi-weekly patch. So there's going to be their big patch that comes along with your standard League of Legends patch. Uh, and then there's also going to be a smaller weekly, you know, bug fix uh, balance change kind of patch. Uh, aside from that, if you want to read this, I'll link this in the description below, by the way. But anyway... Uh, let's start off with Twisted Fate. Uh, my thoughts on Twisted Fate, having played him for a little while, he's actually quite good. Um, I'm not actually sure how good at this point, because what made him really good was Pirates, and Pirates are still good. But as we discuss in a bit, they have been nerfed. Well, you gotta look at this from a holistic perspective, because they were much better on the PBE than they exist on live right now for reasons, so there's a lot of weird balance changes that might not make sense on the surface in the context of live to you, but because this is coming from the PBE where other things have been buffed around it, but we'll talk about pirates later. Anyway, Twisted Fate, he seems quite good. Uh, I've been mostly using him as a mana battery in the background, just get him a bunch of attack speed and like spears and stuff, and he keeps throwing out cards. He tends to get a lot of blue cards for whatever reason. I, I don't know if it's entirely random. Um, I, I'm assuming it's random and just kind of notice the blue cards because they tend to have the most impact, and then he feeds mana into big AoE champs and all that. And aside from that, just kind of going scaling into the game, he's not a bad character in his own right. Um, and the fact that he was a pirate made pirates just better. Uh, and he's also a Sork, so Pirate Sork could be a thing. I didn't really test that too much because Pirate Gunners were the thing on the PvP for the longest time. But again, we're talking about things that may not come to live, so let's not discuss that too much. Let's just move on. Um, ranked, I've heard two different theories. That ranked is going to go live on the day of the patch, and that also they might delay it a little bit. We'll see what happens. It doesn't really say it just says team fight tactics ranks uh ranked beta season starts in patch 9.14 it doesn't say the specific date so it technically leaves both uh possibilities open okay so they change attack speed basically um attack speed items work better on characters with base attack speed higher base attack speed um and less well with characters with crappy attack speed and they've made some sort of changes based around that so that's kind of a general overview thing could be interesting i don't know when that actually made it in if it's been live on the pb this whole time or what um so i can't really comment on that it may feed into sort of the balance weirdness that was on the pbe uh okay so the pve round things i know there was a lot of um talk about how there was going to be an extra like krug round or like a a monster round basically to guarantee items uh that is no longer in place that was on the pbe very briefly now they have this system here i'm just going to read the whole thing out in the event that you do not get an item during a pve round one of the minions monsters or epic monsters will drop now drop gold instead uh for a while in the pbe you could also get exp and that just kind of felt awful because you would, especially on the first round, you would just like go up a rank and then you'd be able to buy stuff or stuff on the bar would be listed that you couldn't even afford. So it was a really stupid system. I don't like this change. I like the guaranteed item thing uh, a lot more. It's unfortunate that that system was on the PB briefly and then Riot was like, well, that's not a solution. Let's just put in gold for some reason. Honestly, the gold feels really bad when you get it. It'll, like it's, yeah, I realize, you know, it's functionally better than getting nothing. But I don't know, it just really makes you kind of realize you didn't get an item all the more. I, I call it the fuck you coin. Um, but I don't know, you get something, I guess. Like, legal, or Team by Tactic is developing it's such an item-dependent game. It's really... And I don't want to talk about balance too much. This is a total separate discussion. Um, so I'm not going to go on this rant. I'm just going to say I don't like this solution. We'll see where the game goes forward. But at least you get something now, I guess. 
Uh, okay, so yeah, this is just ranked stuff. If you're interested in ranked, again, link in available in the description below. You can re-up on the ranked system yourself. Uh, oh, this is actually quite important. The level breakpoints, it might not seem like a lot, just, you know, 6 EXP. I'm noticing, and this might be because of pirates, because pirates generate so much money, but a lot more people are making it to the max level. Um, AKA level nine due to this, um, and, and yeah, that's helping. Anyway, I like this change a lot better uh, because just getting to level nine, it's just such a slog at 70 EXP. So I like this change quite a bit. Uh, makes for, I don't know, more interesting kind of, I can do stuff late game sort of comps. Okay, ability targeting. Uh, abilities that target low health champions now determine lowest health by HP percentage instead of total HP. Who targets based on low HP? It's probably one of the, like, some of the execute stuff. Like, this just makes sense. Um, I'm assuming it has to do with, like, Evelyn and stuff like that, maybe. But, anyway. Uh, there's a lot of small things in here, like quality of life changes. It fixes kind of the weird jankiness of the game. Uh, also note that this patch... No, I should have mentioned this earlier. This patch list, and I'll try and note where it's happening. Um, I can't maybe recall all instances of it. But it also includes stuff that has already been hot-fixed into the game, as far as I can tell. So, anyway... <laughs> Uh, oh, shop. When you re-roll your shop after leveling up from round EXP, the shop is rolled at your new level instead of your old level. I don't know if that's been hotfixed in or this is a new change. Uh, definitely makes sense. I was actually wondering about that and I didn't have an answer, so now we know. Uh, to, okay, user interface. This is pretty handy. This is actually when I'm streaming, I get probably the most questions about this. This added streak indicator next to your gold total. It displays your current streak, win or loss, and the rewards for maintaining streak at different lengths. Um, yeah, that's handy. It's nice. Honestly, like the, the UI for Team by Tactics could still use a lot more polish and all that, but this is a nice start. Um, I like it. Like, the crappy UI honestly really indicates that the game mode was kind of a rush job. Um, you know, despite the fact that the game is fun, it's very clearly kind of a rush job they wanted to get out there. So it's good to see that they're working on that sort of stuff. Uh, added combat recap so you can see how much damage each champion dealt with each round. Um, that kept popping up on the side of the screen when I didn't want it to, so it was a bit annoying. They, they kind of toned that down, I think. Um, it's sort of interesting to see. I don't actually think it's that important. If you have a good, firm grasp of the game... Um, usually you just don't really need to see who's doing what kind of damage. You kind of have a good indication of who you want in and who you want out. But it's nice to see, I guess, especially if you're trying to, like, learn things. Okay, uh, added champion stats um, to their pop-up. So, yeah, you know, more information. That's very good. I find myself I found myself using that since I'm, like, since I've been playing it a while, um, but not knowing actual champion stats, it's nice to finally see that. Okay, so Demon, Mana Burn Chance. Uh, Mana Burn has gone through some interesting iterations. Initially on the PBE, there was, I think it actually was doing scaling. Uh, based on your uh, your Demon level, it would scale up and do Mana Burn damage more. So up to, I think, about like 500% or something like that. It appears that's been taken out, and it's just basically as it is on live, more or less. They've just changed the numbers around. So early game Demon's nerfed, uh, late game Demon's slightly buffed. Which is fine. Honestly, I thought it was very bizarre that demons were getting buffed in the first place. They're fine on live. Um, it's I just didn't know why they buffed them so hard. Um, for a while, you were seeing a lot of demons. The only reason you weren't seeing a, like everyone playing a demon comp on the PBE for a while was because they were overshadowed by pirate gunners, which again we'll talk about because pirate gunners were stupid for a while, but that also got nerfed on the PBE at la the last second, thank God, because I didn't really want to see that go live. Um, so yeah, demons are fine. There's actually demons in general that are better now, which we'll see later. So yeah. All right. Elementalist. I think this already is on live. I'm not, this is, might be one of those, um, hot fix things that happen, but I'm not a hundred percent certain. Um, so I don't really want to talk about it too much, but I think this is already live, but don't quote me on that. Okay. Uh, guardians armor buff stacks up to two times stacks any number of times. I don't fully understand what that... I'm, I'm assuming that means if you have multiple Guardians beyond the initial two, you can keep stacking them on people over and over again. Um, that, that's what I... I've, I've never seen anyone run more than two Guardians, personally, so I don't really know what all that entails. But maybe they'll add more Guardians in, and this is like preemptive change? I don't know, we'll see. 
All right, uh, next, Gunslinger. Uh, improved visualization of Gunslinger AoE attacks. That's not just a visualization bonus. I don't think this is on live yet. Um, granted, my knowledge of live is a bit sketchy compared to PV PvE because I'm playing mostly PvE. Um, but this, like, basically on live, the problem with Gunslingers is just they were actually just glitchy and they weren't really doing their attacks a lot, which is why one of the reasons why Gunslingers on PvE were so crazy, like, they were just shooting everything all the time. Um, so, yeah, this in a weird sort of way is like, uh, like a huge buff to them or one of the huge buffs they got, uh, fix some bugs, uh, fix some bugs where gunslingers extra attacks could fail to fire at high attack speed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, th th I should have read that first. It was this in conjunction with this and it just, um, gunslingers were glitchy and that's why a lot of the time they weren't worth going because they were super unreliable and you couldn't quite tell whether they were going to be their full potential or not. Um, and I talked about this in the past. This is probably why I saw, for example, Freak talk about how he was saying gunslingers are really good compared to rangers. When at the time I was thinking, you're crazy. Rangers are way better. It's because of, he probably knew the actual numbers behind gunslingers, but was not maybe taking into account the fact that they were simply glitched out. And when that was fixed, this is why you're going to be seeing this. Extra units hit. Currently, it's one or everyone in range. Um, now it's been changed to one or two. Actually, they changed this at the last second, so basically just yesterday on the PBE, where it was one and three. So it looks like on live it's going to be nerfed even further, um, which kind of makes me question the viability of gunslingers in general now. I, I, it's hard to say exactly because they were so overpowered and maybe they're simply reasonable. Um, but yeah, if the bug fix in conjunction with gunslinger still hitting everyone in range who went live you would basically be seeing team fight gunslingers um I, we saw this on the pb for a few days every single team i think no that's not true 95 percent of the teams that i saw win on the pbe including when i went it uh or the specific comp was pirate gunslingers and plus something else oftentimes blade master or something um and sometimes demons would sneak out a, an upset win but it was really, it was just gunslingers. So this is, we'll see how this all plays out, honestly. This is so last minute that I don't really know how this is going to affect how viable gunslingers are alive. It should be interesting. Okay, pirate. Uh, average gold per chest has been lowered. Again, pirates into gunslingers was absolutely crazy. It's been kind of nerfed on every single front here. Um, so if you're wondering why pirates are being nerfed, this is what I'm talking about, where the, it, because there's so much changed with the game, some things you might be sitting there thinking, going, well, that doesn't, you know, I don't really see that on live. Why is it being nerfed? It's because everything else it's coming with. Um, and yeah, pirate gunslingers were just ridiculous. Um, you guys thought, you know, stuff like Pike with Spear or before his nerfs and all that were absolutely crazy. Uh, you just be glad. I mean, it was amusing to see for a few days, but be glad in the long run that you're not seeing pirate gunslingers as they existed. Okay, uh, shapeshifters, bug fix. Shapeshifters will now gain a correct amount of health when they transform. Previously, they would fail to take into account the health they gained from their star level. Um, I am actually not familiar with that bug fix or this bug specifically. I know sometimes shapeshifters tended to bug out and they just wouldn't get health, period. Maybe that's what they're referring to. I know there is a glitch in re regards to shapeshifter health, so uh, bug fix is good. All right, transformation uh, health gained 100% to 60%. That seems reasonable. Um, shapeshifters, once they kind of got... Shapeshifters are an interesting thing with their transformation bonus. Um, I don't know. Once shapeshifters kind of got going, if they actually transformed, they tended to like really, really stomp, and their weakness was um, just pre-transformation. So I don't know. Having the the post-transformation health nerf seems reasonable to me. We'll, we'll see how that works out. Um, again, it's hard really to tell because no one is really using shapeshifters on the PB because of the um, yeah the smothering effect of. Uh, well, actually, demons specifically, because demons would prevent the shapeshifters from shapeshifting, so no one wanted to go shapeshifters because everyone was running demons. Um, and, and also, of course, the whole guardian, I mean, gunslinger pirate thing. Anyway, wild's going to be slightly buffed in, in response to basically, I don't know, a whole bunch of other stuff being buffed. It makes sense to me that they would just kind of throw wild a bit of a bone there. Um, it's nothing huge, but it's nice. Well, I mean, I suppose that the stacking, it's good. It's just a numbers change. Uh, Darius no longer casts his ability when no one's there. That was really annoying. That's good to see. 
Um, I don't know if that's been hotfixed to live yet. I'm going to say no. I feel like I've actually seen that. No, in fact, I definitely saw it on live the other day. Yeah, he just, he'll spin on his own, which is dumb. Okay, Elise, this is big and interesting. At least for a while, you could argue was the best uh, tier one character on the PBE. Also, my music stopped. Anyway, uh, simply because demons were buffed, and she was an early demon, uh, her stats were just better, and in conjunction with a whole bunch of other... Well, why don't we just read what she's going to be on live, and then I'll talk about PBE stuff. Because what live, what matters is live. What happened on the PBE, not so much. Okay, cost has been lowered from 2 to 1. Spiderlings now benefit from the demon origin effect. That is huge. Uh, mana cost has been increased, so it takes a bit longer to transform. Number of spiderlings has changed. This is kind of important. We'll talk more about that in a bit. So it's 2, 3, 4 on live currently. Um... Now, on uh, after patch, it'll be 1, 2, and 4. Health has been lowered. Armor has been lowered. So, yeah, having become a Tier 1 with good stats, uh, and I think she for a while she actually spawned with... It might have been 3. It might have been... It was either 3 or 4 at level 2. So, basically, you would get an early level 2 Elise, and she would shit out these spiders, and then they would all be doing the crazy demon burn stuff. Um, and it was really, really good. So, again, she's been buff-nerfed, in a sense. Um, so, I don't, we'll see how that all turns out. It's very hard to say. I got one day yesterday of testing this on the PBE. She seemed very underwhelming, but again, I'm used to crazy Elise. So, at the very least, she'll probably see actual use now, compared to live. So, basically, anything is going to be better than live. So, this is probably all good. Um, the other interesting thing was, you know, the whole everyone like, well, not everyone, but, you know, tons of people like the sandbag to get first pick early. Elise, as she existed on the PBE, was a really good counter to this and may still be a decent counter to this because, you know, you still get some spiders um, because ev lots of people were going spiders early or Elise early and then she would transform and every single spider would deal damage. So you could see if someone was sandbagging super hard to try and lose every single round and encountered multiple Elise users especially the leveled Elise users, um, you could see someone's HP drop to about like mid-60s, so about, probably about 65-ish, by the first carousel. So it was actually a decent counter to that. Um, and I kind of like that. But again, we'll see how this all pans out. Elise, I'm sure she's pretty good now, um, just not the crazy PB stuff. Uh, Fiora, I'm glad to see she's getting buffed. I think that happened yesterday on the PB, because I started seeing lots of Fioras all of a sudden out of nowhere. Um... And she was actually doing a lot of work. Like, people were investing items and, like, levels and stuff into her. And I saw a couple hyper-carry Fioras, and it seemed pretty good. Uh, so I think you could... Prob I don't know who's going to be the worst tier one now, but it's probably not Fiora anymore. Um, as it, the PB existed a few days back, um, Fiora, I think, would have very easily been the worst character in the game. But not so sure now. This requires more testing, and it's, again, very strange that Rai is changing so much at the last second. It'll be very interesting to see how balance co uh, happens on live. All right, Graves, his HP has been lowered. Graves keeps getting hit with nerfs overall, but again, in the context of the PBE, this makes a lot of sense. It's the pirate um, uh, pirate gunslinger thing. Uh, Graves was an integral part of the thing, and you just put a bunch of on-hit items on him, especially Cursed Blade. Cursed Blade was completely crazy on him, which we'll see in a bit, because he would just like de-level an entire team or ap apply debuffs on a whole team. Um, so yeah, Graves actually was finding a lot of use, and he's probably going to find... He was slightly more... I know he could be used on live currently, but he's slightly more niche. I would say he's going to be a bit more mainstream, but again, it's hard to tell due to the whole last-second PB nerfs and buffs. Okay, Vayne had her attack speed increase slightly. I don't know when this came in, but yeah, she could use that. She's very slow, and Vayne's just kind of... She seemed good when no one knew what they were doing, like, at the game's first release, but she's become increasingly underwhelming over time. So a little quality of life change for there, or I guess numbers change. All right, Warwick. Ability now applies on hit effects. Again, I'm assuming this happened yesterday on the PvE. Um, because I played a full brawler team and it actually won because a lot of brawlers got buffed. 
Uh, so that should be interesting to see. A nice little change for Warwick. Like, basically, Warwick's just kind of been a boring character that sits there and really just sits there for either an incidental brawler buff for a slightly tougher front line, or he's there because you're running wild. Like, that was about it. So maybe he might do something on his own right. I'm seeing if people might be able to come up with interesting um, uh, builds with the on-hit effect on the alt. We'll see what happens. I don't know how many times that applies. Like, how many times it does on-hit? I'm going to assume once... Mm. Anyway, Ari, basically Ari's just going to be less glitchy. She's just going to not be firing around weird alts in strange directions. This is a consistent change uh, we're seeing here, so that's really good. Getting rid of sort of the wonkiness. Um, you know, if she dies, the alt will still do damage. Yeah, like, Ari needed that kind of stuff. It's one of the reasons I didn't like running Ari, because she was all in in inconsistent, weird, and buggy. So, there you have it. Uh, Blitzcrank. Uh, fixed a bug where Blitzcrank could hook a unit off the board if he died while casting. I'd heard of that. I've never seen it. Um, but bug fix, that's good. Uh, nearby allies are more likely to target the unit Blitzcrank pulls. That is really good. That's actually, I did notice that. Um, one of the few times when they actually try and run in Blitzcrank. That characters who just run by the thing pulled and ignore it. I think this will make Blitzcrank a lot... Something subtle like this, I think, will make actually Blitzcrank a lot more of an attractive pick. You know, kind of used uh, as a more effective anti-hyper-carry kind of thing. But we'll see. Okay, Braum. Um, Tooltip changes. They buff Braum's damage reduction early. That's good because, yeah, Braum was pretty underwhelming as a Tier 2 champion. They lowered the mana cost. So I like it. Maybe we'll see more Braums. I mean, Braum is the kind of thing is if you're running Glacial, you get him, but that's kind of it. Uh, I've seen him used, I guess, as an incidental guardian sometimes. I, I think I've done that a few times, but... Anyway, Braum needed some buffs. He got some buffs. Good. Nothing major. Ability targeting nearest enemy, furthest enemy. So basically, he's going to... I'm assuming it means he's going to put the shield in the direction of the furthest enemy. Um, it's not super clear there, but I'm assuming that's what that means. Okay, Lucian. Relentless, relentless Pursuit shot damage has been increased across the board. That's interesting. Um, it's probably in response to the last second gunslinger pirate nerf thing. Because for a while, we were basically seeing... It, it was the Lucian show. He would go apeshit um, and just completely cover the screen with shots and lightning with the static shiv and all that stuff. Um, so in response to everything around Lucian being nerfed, he's probably being buffed on his own. Otherwise, yeah, I suspect we might not be seeing too much Lucian. Um, I don't know when this change came in. I feel like it's another last second PBE change. So anyone wondering why Lucian is being buffed, it's pro again, it's one of those everything surrounding him has changed. Okay, so Pike, I think this has been hot fixed, or some of this was, uh, it's hard to say, because they did definitely hot fix Pike and changed a bunch of his mana costs. But in any case, he's going to, his alt costs more mana, but he's going to start with more mana, so... I'm assuming this is a secondary change to the character. This doesn't look familiar in terms of the hotfix. Okay, Rek'Sai, I, this was, I'm pretty sure, another last second uh, PBE change. Rek'Sai Burrow Duration uh, has gone down. So Rek'Sai does not, like, meander underground for six years now. She'll just pop up, like, pretty quickly and actually use her all properly. Uh, the knock-up duration has been buffed. Uh, damage is, so this is base damage, yeah, auto attack. No, this is alt damage, I think. Yeah, so Rek'Sai um, is just going to be more or usable now, I say. It was really frustrating to use Rek'Sai before. So this is, again, that general trend of brawlers being buffed, I think, almost across... No, actually, never mind. Cho'Gath was nerfed. But most brawlers have been buffed. Um, so it's good to see Rek'Sai maybe is going to get some use, especially as a Tier 2. Uh, it was very difficult to just justify trying to even go Rek'Sai a lot of the time, so... Not, you know, and I doubt Rek'Sai is going to be the star of the show anytime soon, but it's just nice to have something usable there. Okay, Shen. I think this was a last second PB, but well, it doesn't really matter when it came in. Basically, Shen's going to start with more mana. Shen was really annoying and shitty to use, uh, so this will just make his shield go off faster, which again would explain why Shen was working for me the other day on the PB. I hadn't used him in a while. He was basically plunking his alt down really quickly, and... Um, actually doing really good work at helping a team survive that was otherwise very squishy. And I thought to myself, this is weird. Did they buff Shen? Well, yeah, here's your answer. Okay, Aatrox. Um, this is interesting that they're buffing Aatrox. Aatrox is is already really good. He, I don't like using this phrase because it's so overused and misused. Aatrox was sleeper OP, I'm pretty sure. 
uh, and they just made him better. Uh, get ready to see a lot of Aatroxes once people clue into this, I think. His damage was already crazy. He had some survivability problems, and it was just like the difficulty was getting him to use his ult, which that has also been buffed. Um, because, or rather, it costs less mana. Um, I suspect when it goes live, this is going to be one of the characters I'm going to be looking to try and abuse early on, to try and cl uh, climb ranks if I can. All right. Maybe it's because Demon has, like, early game Demon was sort of nerfed. Demon is in such a weird spot with Riot, with what Riot's been doing over the last few weeks. But anyway, Aatrox, really good. Okay, Evelyn. Buffs. Makes sense. Evelyn just felt like one of the more annoying... Um, Hold on, I got hiccups or something. It's ending up as a long video. I've been talking so much. It's, okay, then we're good. Okay, we're good. <laughs> Back to Evelyn. Uh, so, she's health has been buffed. Execute threshold uh, has been uh, made better. So, yeah, I'm assuming this means just, yeah, 65%. So, basically, it's 65% health. She's going to get the execution threshold as opposed to having to get the person down to 50%. Um, I found her execution super unreliable, so that's nice. Uh, execute damage multiplier has been buffed. This is just a lot of buffs all over the place. Now, granted, this is late game, so it's probably going to incentivize people to actually, you know, level Evelyn, I guess. Uh, Evelyn's ability now roots targets during the cast time, 0.35 seconds, prevent them from moving out of the uh, area of effect. I have noticed that happen several times. You wouldn't think it would happen that often with how short the cast time is, but it does. Or it must, although it might also be a number of other bugs that previously existed with Evelyn. That's why it's so hard to tell with this game mode, because a lot of, there's a lot of bugs, and a lot of them overlap. Um, so anyway, Evelyn needed consistency, so that's good. Um, yeah, this is... Good. Evelyn may be more likely to be used. Again, uh, she's just sort of hard to fit into a you know, good assassin comm and stuff as well. But maybe as an incidental assassin on a demon comp. I, I don't know. I, we'll, we'll see. Um, just the fact that she's being bopped is good. Um, so I'm hoping to see maybe more of Evelyn. Okay, Gangplank. This is interesting. Uh, abilities, uh, ability now applies on hit effects. See, since it's just a one-time shot, I wonder if it's guaranteed to do it. The, the wording of it is a bit curious, kind of like the whole Warwick thing here. We'll see how that actually pans out. Because um, it says now applies on hit effects, not can apply on hit effects, but... It seems like it'd be pretty good if you could guarantee an on hit effect. Anyway, fixed a number of bugs with animations and barrel chains. Yeah, the barrels have been kind of glitchy, so... Hopefully they've all been fixed. His attack speed isn't buffed, and his health has been buffed. Um, okay, so this is interesting because Gangplank on his own was a horrible champion on live, but then again we had the whole Gunslinger Pirate thing, and even better for him, Gunslinger Pirate Blade Master, which was crazy on the PBE. Those things have all been, again, largely gutted. Um, maybe, and I don't know how good or bad it is. Either it's going to be viable or kind of crappy, I think. Um, one or the other. Maybe late game, you throw in Blade Master. Like, if you really go for it and you can survive the late game and actually get the full... That's the thing. Full Blade Master Gunslinger is actually very hard to get going. But once it got going, it was insane. It might still be pretty good. But the fact that it doesn't scale through the game better uh, means that it might be even more difficult to reach that crazy threshold. But anyway, because, you know, this game's all about consistency, not what's theoretically good at, you know... You know, in an ideal situation. But anyway, uh, in response to all that stuff, it looks like Gangplank himself as a character has been buffed. Um, so that's good, because yeah, Gangplank's just kind of garbage. Um, and he was, yeah, he was basically he was what I called a linchpin character for certain kinds of builds. Um, so it's nice to see him being a fleshed out character in his own right, as opposed to just basically a, a puzzle piece. An important puzzle piece, but that's really all he was. he was there to like make other people better, which is always kind of lame to see, but maybe it has a place in this sort of game to an extent. Anyway, we'll see how this all works out. Again, it's less about the gangplank changes here that's important and all the stuff that's changing around gangplank and how it's all going to coalesce together. Okay, Katarina, there's bug fix on her alt. I didn't even know that was a thing. Apparently it's a thing. Okay, uh, Kennen, damage uh, has been buffed. Uh, so this is alt damage. And his attack damage has been buffed. Honestly, that makes sense to me. I know a lot of people really swear by Kennen, and they talk about how awesome he is. 
I've had mixed. I don't know. Kennen is just like I feel like he's when he's good, he's really good, and when he's not, it's just he doesn't really seem to do so much. And that's the thing about this game: highs and lows and inconsistency are a mark of something that's not very good. Because this is a game of averages over time, more than anything. Um, so I can see why they would buff him. Um, yeah, just it makes sense to me. Uh, now it. We'll talk about it. There's something else I want to talk about, but we haven't got to that yet, so we'll we'll wait on that. Okay, uh, Morgana. No longer casts her ability at times when no enemies would be in range at the start of cast. Yes, thank you. <laughs> that is so... Given how slow... Like, how long it takes to charge up the Morgana ult under normal circumstances, it was, like, round losing on its own if you didn't get off a decent ult. Like, this is an even bigger thing than the whole Darius thing, because Darius doesn't get those ult out... Unless you're doing hyper carry Darius, Dar yeah, Darius, that's a, that's a bit different. But you know, Darius alt missing, okay, it was annoying, but you can get away with it. Morgana alt missing, less so. A lot of the time, if you have Morgana in there, you expect her to do work. Um, they've also buffed the damage a little bit, which is, I mean, it's not huge, but that's interesting. Like it almost implies that they think Morgana needed a buff. Maybe it's because they've changed early game demons. I don't know. Uh, Morgana's another one of those characters that is phenomenally good. And not enough people use her. Alright, moving along. Poppy. This... Poppy... Yeah, it's nice that she's getting buffed because she wasn't, like, horrible. Um, She was very hard to kill. I mean, she was just... She was vanilla. She was there, didn't really do much. She was there to, like, clog up and make... Um, like Yordle comps really annoying for the most part, and if you were someone who was doing like the hyper carry single knight thing, she would fit in there for the sake of the knight. Um, so it looks like they're flushing out the character in her own right, as opposed to just yeah, kind of being a speed bump more than anything, which is always disappointing to see from a tier three champion. Riot was talking about uh, earlier on how they're like buffing higher tier champions because they were just yeah, they were, I think Poppy's a good example of what's going on there, which is like they exist, they weren't horrible, but they didn't really do anything either. So anyway, armor has been increased, stun duration has been increased, uh, and number, and now basically your ult will chain through people, kind of like a like a shockwave. So um, yeah, that's good. Maybe we'll be seeing more poppies. Granted, the you know the context she gets used in are a bit more limited. Just but I don't know. Maybe maybe people get creative with poppy. We'll see. Okay, Rengar, Savage Attack, Savagery's attack speed buff now is now multiplicative. It increases Rengar's attack speed ratio. So that means I'm assuming it increases his base attack speed so he works better with attack speed items. If so, um, that's good. Honestly, Rengar is one of those characters that uh, uh, sort of initially, not too many people were using, he seemed kind of underwhelming. He is actually quite good in very specific comps I've seen since then, and I've actually done them since then, like um, Wild Void Assassin. Um, some, I've done some weird things, like, what was it, like Wild Void Demon, Demon Assassin or something like that, and then he just gets so many buffs and you stack things on him. Um, I've gotten to the point, I've done a hyper carry Rengar that was pretty interesting, that was like... I think he, he would jump around and he would deal, and he got him tier 3 as well, but he would deal 1,600 damage per jump attack thing. And I also gave him life steals, so he would just go down and then fill all his life back up each time he would crit, and it was pretty interesting. But um, he's still slightly more of a niche character, but um, he's getting a bit of a buff, so it should be interesting. Okay, Shyvana. Uh, Shyvana is being buffed, interestingly. It might be in response to the fact that shapeshifters are being nerfed. And maybe Gnar was tended to be kind of the, the star of the show in any kind of um, shapeshifter comp, but I don't know. Shyvana can get really crazy with the dragon buff. Basically because it does, it frees up an item slot. So if you want to do the single tank hyper carry option, um, Shyvana was a really good candidate for that because, you know, you don't need to get the, um, the magic immunity item anymore. You would just put on... You know, whatever defensive items, like, I don't know, Thornmail, which has been, I think, sort of buffed. Uh, oh, Warmogs, which has been buffed, or, like, Phantom Dancer, or any of that kind of stuff. Uh, there's, there's also the Static Shiv thing, but that's been nerfed, so let's not talk about that. Um, or maybe it is worth talking about. Anyway, later on. But anyway, Shyvana's just been nerfed, or buffed across the board, which is... Strange. I feel like we're going to see a lot of Shyvana's. Like, hyper-carry magic immune Shyvanas, specifically. Uh, with these sorts of changes. It, it, I mean, it's already a good idea to do. 
but maybe it's in response to demons probably becoming more powerful because that is really that's something that really shuts her down uh demon comps i did notice that when everyone i it was very very difficult to run shapeshifter comps on the pbe when everyone was using demons because they would just mana drain and no one would ever transform so you need like a fodder front line in front of it to try and make things happen. Um, granted, there's another solution of putting rapid fire cannon on Shyvana and then she could kind of shoot from the back line and then transform a bit like a Gnar, but that's a full item to put on there. So anyway, um, we'll see how this all pans out. Uh, but I personally see, feel like we're going to be seeing a lot of Shyvanas. Also note the the um, since we're on the topic of the single tar or the single character hyper tank carry thing. Um, Cursed Blade, which we're going to be probably seeing a lot more of, uh, will be, and we'll see that in a bit, is going to be, sh will shut that kind of comp down quite hard. So that's also another counter to that there. Anyway, uh, Vagar, I don't know what that's about. Maybe there was some context in which 9,999 wouldn't kill. I, I don't know. I don't know if that's a joke or a serious change. Uh, Mana cost has been lowered. It makes sense. I mean, Vagar, he could, I've seen, here's the thing. When I say something is bad or not impressive, people like to point out this, the niche specific instance where they either did it or saw it, and then like the Vega, machine gun Vega, for example, is like, oh, 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 and he ults the entire screen and like kills a whole bunch of people. How many times have you seen that? Right? Um, this game is about consistency. So they're going to lower the alt, the mana cost. Um, in general, Vega just kind of wasn't super interesting. They were just much more high impact champions. And it was like, Vagar can do things, but, well, Aurelian Soul exists, right? <laughs> but anyway, uh, moving right along. Uh, Volibear has been buffed across the board. That probably factor, well, was even in, uh, anyway. Volibear, Volibear is an interesting character. Um, Volibear seemed a lot better early on, I think, because no one was really using him, and Glacial Ranger was a lot easier to get, and he would just stand in the front line and clog things up. So he was more... I always thought, and I still maintain to a degree, that he's good, but more so in kind of like... He's a less extreme version of a gangplank, where he was kind of like an easy thing to pick up because no one was getting it, and he would fit into a comp to make the comp work. But, you know, granted, he's, but again, a less extreme version of that. Like, he's not as trash as Gangplank. Um, and his team comp was less kind of weird and extreme. It was kind of a generic comp. And then, I don't know, it it, sent, it just kind of got harder to do the full Glacial thing uh, as time went on. So um, I guess they want to make Volibear more of a character, again, in his own right. Makes sense to me. So we'll see what that does to the character. Um, and if he keeps up with a lot of these other buffs and stuff we're seeing here. Okay, Akali, uh, fixed a number of bugs that would sometimes cause her ability to not deal damage. That was really annoying, yep. Uh, no longer cast her ability at times when no enemies have been arranged to start to cast. If anyone has ever used much of Akali, I'm sure you've seen this, and these two bugs were just infuriating. Um, if you gave her any mana to start with, especially, like, this is the, the worst example of it, where if she had enough mana to cast right away with, like, two tier items, she's going psh, like right off the bat, and throw Kunai's at the start of the game, and it was just really stupid and annoying. So Akali's a really good character. Um, we'll see, and a lot of what kept her in check were bugs. We'll see if um, this changes this. Uh, oh, also, this is an interesting thing here. One time I put Rapid Fire Cannon on her, and then she would just waste her ult, because her ult is like basically melee range. So she would flub her ult every time. So basically, I destroyed the character by putting um, Rapid Fire Cannon on it. So I imagine this would fix it to an extent. If you, for whatever reason, wanted to put Rapid Fire Cannon, because what she would do is she would attack at range, then walk in, and then negate the bonus of having extra range and then ult. So anyway, at least it won't kill the character if you, if you accidentally do it or something. Uh, Brand being nerfed makes sense. Brand's really good. You've all seen the ult bounce around and murder everything. Um, Cho'Gath is being nerfed, makes total sense. Well, no, it makes sense. Um, basically, a lot of weird overpowered stuff on the PBE was keeping Cho'Gath in check for a while, so you weren't seeing too much of him. But on live, this is one of those changes that's going to make more sense to you guys on live, I think. Um, they've been playing on live, I should say. Where Cho'Gath is just 
continuously been good. Um, now, if you consider the fact that brawlers in general that would be paired with Cho'Gath are going to probably become more common and viable, uh, it makes sense that the strongest of the brawlers is going to get nerfed in the sense of Cho'Gath. He already like, synergizes so well with Rek'Sai anyway because they share the exact same type. So, um, yeah. Uh, early game alt nerf by 0.5 seconds. I mean, really, Cho'Gath only starts to come into his own at Tier 2 anyway, so as you get to the higher rank, it's less of an issue, but anyway, uh, Cho'Gath nerf. All right, Draven had his attack speed nerf. This is interesting, because I thought on the PB what they were supposed to do is they were supposed to nerf his alt. I don't think that actually ended up happening. What they, it looks like they've done is just nerfed his straight-up base attack speed, which means... Remember, uh, they've changed how items work, so that's actually a bigger nerf than it might look like because it means he functions less well with attack speed items. But we'll see how that all goes. Uh, again, it makes sense. For, uh, again, what kept him in check on the PB for a while, and it was a broken record, I realize, but i got to keep mentioning it. Um, Gunslinger Pirate was uh, what was... Like, basically because of that and its oppressiveness and that being really the only backline AD carry option to you, you weren't seeing as many Dravens until he came in late game as a Blade Master. I think um, going to live, we're going to just be seeing a lot of Dravens again, kind of like we are now. Um, but maybe less with this attack speed nerf. We'll see. All right, Nar. Uh, Nars is being nerfed. Makes sense. Nar is one of those characters where I think across, like... He might not be the best character, period, but I, the, I think out of... And especially because he goes with Wild, and Wild kind of goes with everything sort of thing. Basically, yeah, Wild was sort of like the Guile theme of uh, team comps or team classes or whatever, I guess. He just sort of went with anything. Um, and because of that, and Nar was so good, I think the most team comps that were actually viable and good, on average, tend to contain the most Nars of anything, if I had to guess, but... Um, yeah, Nara was just phenomenal on his own as well, and he fit in all kinds of things. And especially given that Wild is being buffed, um, maybe, well, I also got to keep in mind that Transformation is being nerfed, but... Anyway, Nara's being nerfed. Makes total sense to me. Nara was one of those things, he would transform, uh, and then you were like, oh, I'm winning. Oh, wait, no, I'm not. Nara just transforms, so... Um, that, that makes total sense to me. Uh, Leona's being buffed, so her mana cost and her alt is being lowered. That makes sense in a weird sort of way. I'm not saying Leona's bad or anything. Um, she's kind of weird because she really only fits in Noble Comp or an inst much like... I mean, it's like the other Guardian, I guess. They either go in their own comp, so Glacial or Noble respectively, or you just kind of want an incidental Guardian that splashes in. Um, so yeah, Leona wasn't bad, but honestly, of all like the big AoE stun type champions, when you're thinking stuff like Sejuani and you know Cho'Gath, she was the worst of them. So yeah, it makes sense to me that they're gonna buff that. I'm not saying Leona was like horrible or anything, but just you know, there there are other things that were doing what she was doing, at least in terms of her ult, much much better. So. Uh, anyway, Sejuani, the stun duration is being nerfed at lower ranks. Makes total sense to me. There should be no surprise there. Sejuani was probably considered one of the better characters overall. So there you have it. All right. Uh, tier 5 champions, Anivia. Ability no longer cancels and Anivia dies. I didn't actually know it did that. Um, I assumed it persisted. Maybe it's because I was watching it do it on the PBE already and it persists there. But anyway, if Anivia dies, her ult stays there. Uh, okay, this is important here. Misfortune. Misfortune um, became all the more important on the PvE because, again, Pirate Gunner, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going into that. Uh, don't worry. But she had some issues. Let's just read it. Ability targeting. Random enemy gone to current attack target. This is huge in the sense that... Um, Misfortune, a lot of the time, is a make-or-break character, depending on what her ult does. And because the alt could just go in some weird direction and there were so many issues with it, you would just straight up lose and, like, lose games. Because, you know, by the time Misfortune comes in, it's pretty important, right? Like, no one has much hit points by this point. You maybe only have one round to give. You're doing really well. You set up your team comp, you know, team comp properly. Then Misfortune turns, like, backwards and shoots her alt off screen or something dumb like that. Um, and then doesn't hit anyone, and then you die. It's really shitty. So this is going to add more consistency, stuff that makes sense, less bizarre RNG. Um, I don't even know why it was like that to begin with, but 
Um, yeah. Now retargets her ability if the target dies during wind up. Okay, an extension of that. Fixed a bug or misfortune would sometimes move and charge her alt, change her alt's trajectory while channeling. Again, less wonkiness with her alt, but the mana cost has been increased, which makes sense to me. Um, it was very, very easy to get misfortune's alt off. You like I, a lot of the time I would just put like um, a seraph's embrace on her, and she would just alt. And then she would alt again, and it was just nutty. Like, if you somehow survived the first barrage, <laughs> you weren't surviving the second one. So, in conjunction with the bug fixes, that getting nerfed makes total sense to me. Um, yeah, there you have it. It, it. The real question is, is how she's going to function in a post-Gunslinger nerf world. We'll see. Okay, uh, Yasuo yeah, so abilities now apply on hit effects. Okay. Um, so I guess when he does the stabby thing, he applies on hit effects. I don't know, is it worth putting on hit effects on Yasuo at all? I guess it could be. Um, knock-up duration has been increased, and the damage has been changed so that it is, uh... Yeah, just buffed, except at level 1. Not that you're ever going to see a tier 3 Yasuo. I don't think I've ever seen a tier 3 Yasuo. Like, ever. I don't know if I've ever seen a tier 3, tier 5, or, or a level 3, tier 3, tier 5, god, that's confusing. Level 3, tier 5 champion in general, maybe I have at some point, but anyway, the, the, like these sorts of buff chain, um, buffs are irrelevant in max tier on a, a rare champion. Uh, aside from that, um, the reason they're doing this, yeah, I guess it's kind of a case of Yeso is like, I don't know, he's not bad, he's really good, in a way, because he's rare. But he definitely, I don't know, as time went on and his comps got tighter and more efficient, and the fact that he, I don't know, even if you're running Blade Master, yeah, he's still good. He tended to complete the Blade Master comp, but in a weird sort of way, it's hard to articulate why, but I can see why he's being nerfed, or, or buffed, rather. Like, as a character on his own, own uh, again as people kind of learn more things um uh, yeah i guess he's just kind of being put by the wayside to an extent compared to other rare champions because he is such kind of like that almost sort of loner champion I mean, he does have the exile you know class attached to him so uh, that's my thoughts on it there okay items this is really important here items champions are one thing but you guys all know how important items are Okay, general. Items no longer benefit from attack power. I think that has already been hot fixed in. I definitely know it has been in specific instances, for example, Locket. Um, I'm not sure if it applies across the board yet, but at the very least, if it doesn't apply across the board yet, it will be applying across the board. Uh, Spatchano doubles the stat power of its sister component. For example, Yomu's Ghost Blade grants 40 attack, so pretty straightforward stuff there. Um, makes sense to me. I noticed definitely on the PBE, at least, people, because there's so many good items that, like, really complete, really crazy comps. Um, spatula, I'm not certain how this is on live at the moment, um, but definitely on the PBE, Spatula was really falling to the wayside. And even this is even after this buff, so we'll see what happens with that. But um, anyway, Spatula buff. Note, it doesn't say anything about combining two Spatulas into a Force of Nature. I think that still gives no stance. Uh, all right, anyway, Cursed Blade can now reduce targets to zero star. That is really good. Uh, fixed a bug where Cursed Blade would reset an enemy champion's level if triggering a second time. Um, yeah, that's obviously good. That might be one of the reasons we don't see it on live. Now, Cursed Blade, I think, was supposed to be one of the things... No, never mind. That was something else. I'm not going to talk about that. Um, so, yeah, this is Cursed Blade. You're probably going to be seeing a lot more of. Um, it one of the reasons we were starting to see so many on hit items was because of the whole gunslinger thing, and gunslingers would shit like just shit out bullets and hit everyone on the screen and apply on hit uh, effects to everyone. It's not going to be as important now, but cursed blade is an effective again counter to one hyper carry tank that's invulnerable. You just rank them down and they turn into crap. Um, so, I don't know, it's probably going to be reverted to a slightly more niche use again, as opposed to just it, put it on a gunslinger and they'll de-level everyone on the team. Um, maybe it's just going to be relegated to stuff like Graves specifically again. Um, but anyway, Cursed Blade is, is a very good item, uh, especially with this kind of lowered star thing. Also, potentially with alt supplying on hits on different instances, maybe could be interesting there. Uh, okay, Frozen Heart. Effect now applies more consistently to any unit near the wearer. Good. Bug fix is great. Uh, Guardian Angel. This is an interesting one. For a while, Guardian Angel on the PBE used to increase the character's level. 
um, when they came back. And that was really good, really, really good. And there's a reason that's not going live. Um, instead, we're seeing just some general buffs to it, as opposed to changing what the item actually does. Um, so revive delay, and so basically come back faster, that's good. Um, and health restored has gone up to 1,000, from so they doubled it. So that's good. Um, we might maybe be seeing some Guardian Angel use. It's possible. Like, there's so many good items. It's not that Guardian Angel is horrible. It's just that so many other items are so good and, like, basically break comps and make them just really ridiculous that you're just not seeing Guardian Angel. Um, Guardian Angel can be nice. Like, basically characters who die and then their ult persists around them while the GA is going and then come back. It could be, might see more, some more use there. But at the very least, they're going to come back with a reasonable amount of health. So maybe we'll occasionally see Guardian Angel, but I suspect it's still not, it's going to be a pretty niche item. One thing I do want to try is, I've, what I've done is actually Guardian Angel and Kennen, because his ult persists even after he dies, so that was kind of nice. Uh, another thing that kind of I want to try but haven't yet is Guardian Angel and Morgana. We'll see how that might work, but anyway. Uh, Rage Blade being buffed, that might seem weird to you, given how prevalent Rage Blade is, but again, so many other things have been buffed across the board that, you know, whatever, Rage Blade... Especially since, just, I don't know, I guess maybe a lot of games are going faster with crazy damage up front. So maybe getting it to scale a bit faster. Right? Um, okay, Hextex. Fix a bug where spell map was sometimes not properly great. I swear it was doing that. Now that I've read that, yeah, now I can confirm. Yeah, it wasn't working in those instances. Um, so that's good. Um, it's one of the things that actually prevented me from using Hextech a lot of the time. Also of note, Hextech, they buffed the amount of health it gave on the PBE. It looks like at the last second they've taken that away. I think it went up to 33%. Unless that already hit live and they're not mentioning it, but I think it's just stuck at 25% then. Uh, okay, no longer benefits from item effects. Looking at Shavana with Thornmail, which means I'm also, uh, I'm also assuming it no longer works with... Um, Ionic Spark, because that was a thing for a while. People would do Hextech Ionic Spark, uh, and then people would cast a lot of alts on the enemy team, and then they would get blown up and the person would heal. Uh, and so that was kind of a crazy build. But I guess they, that's been... It's weird that they don't even mention uh, this Ionic Spark thing, and they mention this Thornmail thing. But anyway, uh, there you have it, Hextech. It's just going to be Hextech. Okay. <laughs> Ionic Spark. Now deals true damage instead of magic damage. Fixed a bug where Ionic Spark was applying 75 damage instead of... Uh, so bug fix is obviously good. True damage instead of magic damage seems really good. It means, I guess, Shyvana will no longer be immune to it and stuff like that. Um, I guess, in a sense, it's, it's a way to deal with kind of hyper tanks to an extent. They won't be immune to it if they get, you know, that magic immune item, whatever it was called, or, you know, the dragon thing. Um... Yeah, not a lot to say about that. Interesting that they're introducing more true damage mechanics, because this isn't the only instance. We'll see another one in a second here. Uh, so yeah, I guess Riot is starting to see the the issue with um, yeah, with the hyper tanks, and are introducing some countermeasures. So uh, yeah, there you go. Ionic Spark, uh, Locket. Right now, shields the wearer and the champions two spaces to the left and the right of the wearer at the start of the round. Yeah, that's not live, is it? Yeah, that's been on the PB for a while now. Shield value has been increased to compensate, but basically, yeah, you need a line, which makes it significantly less usable outside of very specific comps where you actually just want a straight-up line for whatever reason. Like, let's say you're running, I don't know, you have a lot of brawlers and you want them all even tankier, or, I don't know, maybe you're running a Yordle comp. Well, I guess it still works with Yordles then. Um, and you don't really care who's up front as much. Um, so yeah, I don't know, if you really want to have a weird formation, you can still do good things with, like, Locket is technically better, I guess, but, again, you have to have everyone in a line, so. Alright, Luden's Echo. Fixed a bug where targets weren't taking the correct amount of damage. Oh, I think this is, this stuff has all been hotfixed in, I do believe. Um, if not, this will be important, I guess, but I think... Luden's Echo is not really changing outside of, yeah, a bunch of bug fixes and stuff like that. So I wouldn't worry about Luden's Echoes too much. But it's just it's basically just supposed to apply um, flat damage. So there you have it. Uh, Morella Nomicon. 
This is another weird one where it existed in a certain state on the PBE. That's been reverted, so we're not even going to talk about that. It was kind of interesting what it used to do, but anyway. Uh, max HP damage per second has gone from 2.5 to 3%, so it's been buffed. Um, I guess, again, to deal with hyper carries to an extent. Uh, rapid Fire Cannon now updates in response to range changes. Um, yeah, the first thing I thought before, you know, I saw this part is, yeah, rest in peace, rapid fire cannon Nidalee. Nidalee, for those of you not aware, would maintain her spear form range, um, with rapid fire cannon after she would transform. So Nidalee would basically be biting people from across the screen. Um, I don't, I'm sure there's other instances where that was still, uh, I wonder if that was a thing with Gnar. I never actually tried it. Probably was. Uh, but anyway. They just basically fixed a bug. Um, okay, Recurve Bow has been buffed. Again, this might seem a bit weird, but it's in probably response to the whole base attack speed thing, scaling with attack speed items. So we'll see what that does to the game overall. This is kind of one of those weird things I'm not sure about, and I don't know when it hit live on the PBE. Uh, so there you have it. This is actually really important. It makes Redemption, I would say, I mean, uh, again, in really specific contexts, you could use Redemption. But this makes it really interesting. Um, Redemption now triggers a 25% health. No longer damages enemies. I don't even know what that... Wait, did it damage enemies currently on live? It's hard to remember because like no one uses Redemption. But anyway, um, basically you can get a character who maybe might get low. And then just this goes off and then they heal back up to more or less full. Or a character who can get low and has some kind of innate sustain and can sort of stay there. And, yeah, it's it's actually quite interesting. Um, I feel like we're going to be seeing more redemptions now as opposed to no redemptions. Okay, Runan's Hurricane. Um, so this has had some interesting changes. No one was using it on the PBE, so I don't really have much of an opinion on this. Mainly because, yeah, gunslingers were overshadowing everything else and just it, it would make stuff like this un redundant and just kind of piddly and pathetic by comparison. Um, now the problem, oh, anyway, it's going to go from two bolts to one, and the damage has been reduced, but the Runan's Hurricane now applies on hit effects. This could have some really weird niche uses. Um, I tried doing it with Graves, and it didn't create a second Grave Splash, if anyone was wondering. I don't even know if it did anything. Uh, might have been just a bug on the PBE. But, um, I don't know, you got to get a spatula and you got to get a, um, a Negatron Cloak. And now Negatron Cloak builds into so many really good things that it's, I don't know, a lot of times it seems like it's very hard to justify, especially with things like Cursed Blade and all that. But, um, I don't know. If someone's going to find a use for it, it's going to be very niche and very weird and potentially really good. But as a general item, yeah, no. Like, I don't know, the only thing that comes to mind immediately is, like, maybe put it on someone who's already using a Cursed Blade, or, like, maybe in some kind of Glacial Comp, or man, whatever. I don't want to think about it too much right now. It just seems kind of meh. All right. It's either meh or disgusting in some niche context. All right, anyway, Seraph's Embrace. Uh, fixed a bug where uh, Seraph's effect wouldn't stack. Okay, fixed a bug, great. Shiv now always hits three additional targets rather than all champions in a frontal cone. Now only activates a maximum of one time per launch attack. Okay, so this is this in conjunction with um, gunslingers was why we were seeing yeah league, well one of the reasons it was gunslinger madness on the PBE for a while. You would basically be getting tons of shiv procs, I think simultaneously. And it would, the lightning would hit everyone. So, I don't know, this, this all makes sense to me. Um, static Shiv, on, like, still is just a very good early game oppressive item. So this just means, I guess, it's going to scale less well into the late game. Because I honestly, like, early time, it, because it's a flat damage thing in the early game, um, it's just sort of like you get your Shiv procs off and then you just kind of win. So, uh, yeah, I guess they want it to be less an all-around item and probably more just an early game item more than anything, really. But we'll see how that pans out. Okay, uh, reflect damage on Thornmail. Uh, so it's 35% of physical damage taken as opposed to 100% physical damage mitigated. Magic uh, damage type has gone from magic damage to true damage. Honestly, I don't know what this means number-wise. Someone would have to do the number crunching on average. I'm assuming... 
just if I had to take a pure guess here. And it depends on who you're putting on Thorn Mail, I guess, and who's actually, you know, hitting the person with Thorn Mail. But on average, I'm assuming this is a buff. And also, the other problem is I don't know if this is physical damage mitigated by Thorn Mail specifically or physical damage mitigated, period. I'm going to assume it's physical damage mitigated, period. But anyway, Thorn Mail getting a buff, probably. Uh, I, but I don't want to talk about it too much because I don't really know what these numbers mean. Okay, Warmogs, uh, regen 3% to 6%. This is huge. Obviously, you don't need me to tell you that. They've just straight up... Oh, I, it's 6% missing. Oh, shit. When did this change? I think on the PBE for a while it was straight up 6%. 6% missing now. That's interesting. Um, huh. That is, I would say, actually in most contexts. Well, I mean, that means that 50% you start, below 50% you start healing more, but above 50% you start healing less. Huh. That's an interesting change. And actually, as it stands, I don't have much to say about that, because I think on the PB, unless I misread things, it was straight up 6%, and they thought that was too much, so it's been nerfed. Um, could be interesting in conjunction with stuff like... Uh, uh, redemption. Now, also, another interesting thing is, uh, I suppose you're more likely to be lower health towards the end of the game when less damage is coming out. So maybe that is actually, yeah, probably a buff in most contexts because, like, you're going to drop kind of low late game with less damage coming at you, so you're going to kind of be able to regenerate more back. So I'm going to say that's, uh, yeah, that seems like a buff regardless. Okay, anyway, Zeke's Herald. Now only grants attack speed to champions, uh, to, oh, especially if with the hyper carry kind of thing. But anyway, let's, Zeke's Herald. Now only grants attack speed to champions two spaces left and right of the wearer attack speed or 10%, 15%. So, um... I feel like this is less of an important change compared to the locket thing, because I, I feel like locket is harder to use in a line to an extent, whereas Zeke's Herald, a lot of the time, you could have kind of a gunner line in the back. Well, maybe not as much now that, you know, gunslingers and other thing. But anyway, um, so yeah, it's a buff if you have a line. Um, so it'll apply to a maximum of five people. Um, but yeah, you can't just plunk it in the middle of a comp, like in the diamond shape and everyone gets it kind of thing. Now you got to actually kind of think about the spacing a bit more and you can do some creative stuff with it. I've definitely used it on the PBE like this several times. Um, both as a front, basically I have a long front line or a long back line and it tends to work out. So I like this change better. I, I really didn't like the, the I'm going to cluster into a diamond and then I have a buff stick in the middle of it kind of thing. I thought that was kind of lame. So this should maybe kind of make things a bit more interesting. All right. And then some bug fixes here. Uh, all right. So like I said, that I don't even know how long I've been talking. That took a while. But again, there was a lot to cover. Hopefully I wasn't dragging on too much about the unimportant stuff. But um, oh, I should probably mention there are a couple things I want to talk about which are not listed in the patch. It looks like bread buff is untouched. Red buff was changed considerably on the PBE, but it's not relevant, apparently, because they decided it wasn't a good idea. So that's not a thing. Also, I swear they changed rarity of um, levels and, like, they smoothed out where characters appear. Um, in terms of, you know, your level in relation to rarity, and you were less likely to just get stuck in weird comps where just stuff would stop appearing. But it doesn't say anything about that at all. Um, now, this is interesting because yesterday I streamed on the PB, the last patch that happened like last night for a few games. And I was sitting there going, man, I'm getting stuck in these weird comps and like snagged at various tiers. Um, like on live. And that wasn't happening on the PBE for a while. Uh, so I wonder if that's either a last second revert or what's happening there, but they're not saying anything, so I guess that's not really changing up. Which is unfortunate, because, I mean, if there was in fact change, and I'm almost certain they did, the PB was feeling really nice and smooth, but we'll see how things go live. If they haven't said anything, I can't comment on it. So, hmm. Alright, uh, I mean, yeah, that's the additional stuff. But anyway, uh, this is how stuff is going to go live for the most part, I would guess, uh, if not exactly. Uh, overall, very good stuff. 
Um, the game on live just feels very kind of stale and people doing the exact same stuff. Um, this should really shake things up a bit. Kind of, I don't know. Maybe create a bit more diversity. Uh, I was very concerned about pirate gunners uh, going live as it existed, but that, as you can see, is not happening. So, um, I mean, I could have, uh, on a personal level, I could have abused the crap out of it for a few days before other people clued in and then just like climbed up ranks, I guess. But uh, honestly, that would have gotten stale really quickly. So it's good that's not happening. Um, Demons seem to have been brought back in line to an extent, so a lot of the craziness that happened on the PBE was more or less sorted out. Uh, my big disappointment is that items are still largely random, uh, and a lot of games are just going to be decided on that kind of thing, where you get no items early, and maybe you get items later, but... You know, you're putting such a deficit that by the time you actually get the items to scale into something properly, you've already basically lost. Um, and then you come in as a result of very low placing. You're not even able to come back to, a, you know, with enough rounds to kind of place, you know, fourth or third or something even. But um, we'll see how that all pans out, especially given that there's going to be more diversity and stuff, at least for a while. And then until people figure out the one specific broken thing as a result of all these changes. Uh, but yeah, looking forward to playing this stuff in Ranked. Uh, new character Twisted Fate should be nice. That's really all I gotta say. Thanks for watching this extremely long video. Um, but yeah, get ready for a lot of changes. The, the, world you, the world view you had of Teamfight Tactics before this patch is just gonna be completely different. So you can kind of throw out all, a lot of those strategies and ideas and what you thought was good. Um, you just throw it out the window. And uh, get ready to uh, start fresh. I'll see you guys around. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. Maybe I'll stream today. I, I don't know when I'm putting this video up. Bye.